Hello everyone, it's Henry again, and I hope you are all excited for this very exciting tutorial on how to use an altimeter. Alright, so today we're going to be talking about how to use the altimeter, how a standard altimeter works, and new technologies in altimetry. This is going to be a very exciting episode, so let's find out how we read our altitude. All right, so let's talk about how to read an altimeter. Just like a clock, it has face and it has hands. However, unlike a clock, it has three hands. So your first large hand, if you want to call it the minute hand, whatever, uh, the first one actually counts in hundreds of feet. All right, so each little tick on the uh, out outer wheel here is 20 feet. So two, four, six, eight, ten. So 100 feet, uh, 200 feet, 300 feet, etc. Your middle hand here counts thousands of feet, so 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4. And your small little arrow, usually on the outside, this guy here counts tens of thousands. So if it's at the 1, it's 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 90,000, etc. All right, awesome. Remember that this is above sea level. So above sea level is basically 29.902 inches of mercury, that's standard. This is not above ground level. That's why it's not zero fee right now. So right now we're at Collingwood, which we're reading at 720 feet above sea level. That is the station's altitude, all right, above sea level. So above the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. If we were to go to another station, this would read differently for um, above sea level. So let's try this now. Let's go to Toronto for a second. Here we are at wonderful Toronto Pearson International Airport. And as you can see, our altitude is different. Even if we're at the same altimeter setting, 29.92, we're currently reading a different altitude around 550 feet. So obviously a lot different than the 720. And if we go to another station like Vancouver, boom, magical teleportation. We're now in Vancouver. If we look at the altimeter here, it's pretty much almost at sea level because we're right next to the ocean. Hence, we're only around let's say 20 feet above sea level. Perfecto. So this leads to another issue though with an altimeter. Here we are back at Collingwood. So here we are back in Collingwood. The thing is that again, altimeters run off of barometric pressure. So how much pressure is in the atmosphere? This changes with weather, hence why we have our knob to calibrate it. Millibars, inches of mercury, aviation we go by inches of mercury. So on the right, we can change this with our little dial here. You can add or subtract and calibrate it to your metars, your ATIS, your AWOS, however you get your weather. And that's what an altimeter setting is pretty much. You can change it. Look at that. So now we're going to go back to zero. So let's say this is above ground level now. This is how you set it to above ground level. We're on the ground at zero. However, you can see that it is not the correct setting to 29.92. That's the setting in the sim right now as before so it would be dangerous to fly right now <laughs> going back to 720 feet we can see that we are currently back at 29.92 which is the station's current weather setting all right all right before every time you fly you have to calibrate your altimeter or else it's dangerous here's why let's change the weather for a second let's make it kind of like a low pressure system all right so let's change this uh altitude from 29.92 just something a little bit lower, 29.30 or something, all right? Watch what happens to the altimeter after I say apply. Come on, there you go. It, it changes, now it says we're above 1,000 feet, right? So now we're at around 1,280. That's dangerous, right? Because if we're flying and we don't have our altimeter set, we could smack into a mountain because it's cloudy outside, right? So it's really important to always make sure that you check your altimeter before you fly and even when you go into new control zone or you get your altimeter region, all right? Because now we're going to set this back to um, 29.30 and as you can see, we're at the correct altimeter setting now and we're safe to fly. We know what our altimeter is. The easiest way to explain how an altimeter works is a balloon. If it's an awesome day outside, let's say it's high pressure outside, the pressure on the inside of the balloon is lower, right? So that means the balloon will shrink because the high pressure is pushing against the low pressure, high to low, therefore the balloon shrinks. Vice versa, 
if it's a low pressure day, so the balloon pressure is higher than the outside pressure, the balloon will grow, right? Because the high pressure wants to get to the low pressure. This is actually pretty much how an altimeter works. Let's take an altimeter and cut it in half and look at the inner workings. All right, here's our wonderful altimeter cut in half. Perfect. So air comes in through the static port of your aircraft. So static air, it's basically the ambient air, right? Even when you're flying, this is the ambient air around you. So as we know, the higher you gain in altitude, the less air pressure there generally is, right? So the closer you go to space, the air is less dense. There's going to be less air molecules. So just like our balloon, this little guy, your aneroid capsule, will begin to expand because this little guy expands and shrinks according to the barometric pressure, just like that balloon we were talking about earlier. So when you gain altitude, this capsule will begin to grow and then feeding this information through gears and mechanisms, it shows it on the altimeter's face right here. And vice versa, when you start to descend altitude, this little guy will start to shrink because lower altitudes tend to have higher barometric pressures. Please note that this isn't always true. Sometimes in different regions or weather anomalies, pressure can actually rise when you gain altitude or you enter a different front system, etc. However, we're just trying to keep it simple for now. Lastly, let's touch on some new technologies in regards to aviation. We have things such as G1000, synthetic vision, things like that, that are making things a lot easier. So here's your altimeter. It's all nice and digital nowadays. Nice and simple to read, 720 feet. And here's our altimeter setting, 29.92. Perfect. Your VSI is located here. And again, really easy to read nowadays, it's just 720 feet. So to change things, we go over to our right side here. So where it pretty much says borrow. And if you look below, you can just change your altimeter. Pretty much the same with a normal altimeter, but nowadays everything is digital. Nice and easy. And that's it for today's little tutorial, everyone. Thank you so much again for watching. We went over how to use an altimeter, how an altimeter works, and cool new technologies in regarding to altimeters. Again, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Like and subscribe as per normal, usual YouTube guff and all that wonderful stuff. And as always, if you have any questions, anything else, leave it in the comments below. And thank you again so much for your support. If there's any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. And if there's anything that you want us to touch on, please let us know as well. Have a great day, everyone. And as always, fly safe and happy landings.